Hi, I'm Kristen, and today I'm going to show you how to make this free applique baby quilt pattern. Um, so I'm going to show you how to make the shapes, how to apply them, and I'm also going to show you how I did the quilting, although obviously you might choose to do your quilting differently. I've got all of the fabric uh, requirements detailed on my blog if you need it um, in detail, but basically for the quilt top, you need one white background piece of fabric and 21 three by three inch squares roughly and I'll show you what we're going to do with them. So you're going to start with some sort of uh, one-sided lightweight um, iron-on fusible. I think I used heat and bond light. Um, so I am just layering on different scraps because I know what size I'm cutting the raindrops to but um, I did work it out and a three by three inch square is pretty much the right size so if you're wanting to cut something down but obviously I was just grabbing things from the scrap in for this so I'm layering it all up trying not to leave any gaps um, but you could of course just cut to the size of the scrap you're using and do them one at a time I was trying to save some time here so I'm layering it up and then if you have a Teflon or a silicone sheet if you're doing it this way because there will be gaps even if you're doing the best little puzzle put that on before you iron everything in place and you should end up with something like this I then um, cut all the individual pieces apart um, so that I could cut out my raindrops now I'm using my um, Go Me, which is the small AccuQuilt cutter for this, but you don't have to have a cutter. I also have a PDF template that you can download from my website, so you can just print that off um, and use it to trace around and cut these out yourself. If you do have any size of uh, AccuQuilt Go cutters, um, the die that I'm using here is the Crazy Petals die 55326. It's meant to be the different shapes of a flower, but um, the largest petal shape I thought looked uh, a heck of a lot like a raindrop. So <laughs> that's what I decided to use it for. So you're supposed to be able to layer six pieces of fabric. Now, obviously this has got fusible on the back, so I'm kind of pushing it, but I'm doing it anyways, and it did work out. Um, so I'm just feeding it through in the machine. If you've not seen this before, um, basically the blades are in the bottom of that uh, die that I just put the fabric on top and then you put the mat on top and you crank it. So I'm trying a little bit harder here because I did basically layer up 12 layers. If you count the fusible, it's only supposed to be six, but <laughs> uh, I don't always follow the rules. <laughs> um, anyway, it worked. So um, I know that looks like a lot of fabric waste, but that's got fusible on the back. So I'm actually going to save it and use it for something else. Um, so I save all these little bits that are coming off uh, and put them in a little basket. And there are my raindrops and they all have the fusible on the back. So all I have to do uh, is when I'm ready to place them is peel off that back paper and iron them down where I want them to go. So I did that a few times. I'm speeding this up here. Um, so it's 21 that you need There's three for each sort of color grouping. So all the colors of the rainbow, but if you need the list that is also on the blog. So in order to get the raindrops placed in this kind of cascading fashion, um, what I did was folded the background fabric in the center to create this crease. You could also use a marking pen. The point is to find the dead center of the fabric so that you know where your middle line is going to be. This is the fiddliest bit of the quilt top is placing the raindrops. So if you um, try to put the outer rows of raindrops three inches from the center fold to the fattest part of the raindrop and each raindrop should be 3.5 inches um, from the next one above it in its own row. Um, and if you do that, then if you line up your ruler across, um, you should be butting up uh, against sort of the bottom and the top of the raindrops in each row should uh, line up. And then the top one uh, from the middle, so the middle row, the top raindrop, the very tip should be roughly 9.5 inches from the top of your background piece of fabric and you can kind of work out the rest from there. It is all written down on the blog if that's too confusing to understand the way I'm saying it now. Once you're happy with the placement, remove the backing paper and iron them down in place. 
this is them actually stitch town. Um, I forgot to record that, but basically all you're doing is top stitching around each raindrop. I did it twice around um, and I used a slightly wider stitch length and I also changed my thread color for each color grouping. So I used sort of red for red, pink for pink. You don't have to do that, but um, I felt like I wanted to. So a lot of the reason that I wanted to do a quilt like this was to try quilting something with a lot of negative space. So I knew I wanted to do a kind of a cloud design, which I've never done. So I kind of uh, used a bit of Amazon packing paper and cut something out roughly what I thought I was going to do. And that's me also um, auditioning um, binding fabric around the edge there. So I didn't actually mark out the cloud outline on my quilt top ahead of time. I don't actually usually mark my quilt tops before I quilt them. Perhaps I should. But <laughs> anyways, I just roughly eyeballed. Um, I've recently updated my machine to a Bernina. And I also bought the ruler foot and some quilting rulers. So this was actually my first time quilting with any kind of ruler. And I decided to start with the curve. <laughs> um, so all I'm doing is going partially around this circle. And then when it kind of looks like, you know, that bulbous side of a cloud shape, then I stopped and repositioned it and sort of moved it so that um, I was just continuing to have those little... Um, I don't know what to call them, little fluffy sides of the cloud going around. In retrospect, um, I perhaps should have started in the middle and echoed out because what I ended up doing was starting, I did the outline of the whole thing first and then use, so the Bernina quilting rules come with the different sizes of these circles. So I was using sort of smaller and smaller ones to echo inside. So then I ended up um, obviously reaching a point where I couldn't get much smaller so there's a kind of funny shape in the middle of the cloud it still looks cloud like it's fine but um if you were going to do this in a little bit more of an intentional way you might want to mark out your lines mark out the outline and maybe start from the middle um so I made it a bit kind of off center I wanted it sort of bigger on the side of the outer the, the furthest raindrop line to the let me think the right I guess it is <laughs> um as you're looking at it uh, and I was just doing this one section um, in these curves to make the cloud and then the rest I was going to do straight line quilting to sort of you know mimic rain so it's like in the middle of the rain shower and the raindrops are kind of the bright bit of it this is just a different angle because the light on this machine is really bright so it's hard to kind of show you properly um, I am liking this new Bernina that the main th reason I bought it is because one I saw it on sale X display and you know what I'm like with sale stuff um, and two because it's got a huge throat space so it's about 10 inches um, which is way bigger than the one I had before so it does make it easier to maneuver but I'm working on a slightly bigger, bigger quilt now like a large throw size and it's not easy like I mean it's not as hard as the other ones but it's um I wouldn't say, you know, it makes it as easy to do as someone with a long arm or something like that. But anyway, if you're if you're interested and you want to hear my thoughts on the machine, let me know. I'm happy to kind of do it. I've only had it for a month or so, so maybe I should wait until I've played with it a bit more. But happy to do that if anyone's interested. So anyway, this was my first time playing with it. And this is me doing those echo lines inside of the cloud. And so that's what the cloud looked like. It's hard to see because I did use white thread, um, but I think I kind of like it. So for the rest, I did sort of semi-regular straight lines to the outer side. And then in the middle, um, I did use my straight rulers to go um, in between the raindrops. And then I curved around one side, sort of alternating one side um, as I went down. So it is looser quilting in the middle, still fine for the batting I used. Um, just I think it was a way of kind of highlighting those raindrops in the middle. So this is a 
that there's a close up of the quilt after it had been washed. So this is raw edge applique. So you will get some fraying around the edges. I quite like that look, but if you don't, you could increase the size of the raindrops by about a quarter inch and do it needle turn applique style if you like. All the details um, plus the template for the raindrops is on the blog. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, if you like videos like this and you want to see more, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment and let me know what you think. Thanks for spending time with me.